You already know that weak acids are involved in an equilibrium. And then when we talked about the common ion effect, we learned that the conjugate base of the weak acid has a pretty strong effect on the equilibrium itself. And now what we're gonna do is take it up one more step and talk about buffer solutions. And the idea of buffers is probably one of the most important topics that we talk about in the second semester of general chemistry. And this is because buffers are often used inside of a laboratory setting, especially when biological molecules are being involved. What a buffer does is it controls the pH of a solution. So if I have a solution and there's a buffer inside of there, the pH is held at a known value, and that pH will only change very slightly if I add an acid or a base to the solution. There are two common types of buffers. Uh, the first is a solution of a weak acid and its conjugate base, and this is by far the most common type of buffer that's used. But we can also use a solution of a weak base and its conjugate acid. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at how a buffer does its job conceptually. So how does a buffer use up an acid or a base in order to keep the pH relatively the same? So here I have an equilibrium of our weak acid, hydrofluoric acid, and really what you need to remember is that in this equilibrium we also have a conjugate base. So literally we have an acid, hydrofluoric acid, and a base, the fluoride anion, involved in this equilibrium. So no matter what you add, um, be it an acid or a base to a buffer solution, there is something in there to counteract it. So here, say I have a solution and I start adding hydronium to it by, say, adding a uh, strong acid like HCl. Le Chatelier's principle says that as we add in hydronium, the equilibrium is going to shift to the left. So the hydronium is actually being used up by this equilibrium, and so there's very little left over to actually change the pH. So as we add uh, hydronium to this uh, solution, the hydronium reacts with the fluoride anion and converts the fluoride anion to um, hydrofluoric acid. So overall, the hydronium gets used up, and so there's none left to change the pH. So one of the most important things you want to remember when I have a buffer of a weak acid and its conjugate base, as we add hydronium, that conjugate base, fluoride anion, is being converted to uh, the weak acid, hydrofluoric acid in this case. So remember, that's the most important thing you want to remember uh, right now. So things get a little bit trickier when we want to understand how does a buffer deal with hydroxide. And what you need to remember is that the fluoride anion actually has its own Kb equilibrium. And you need to remember that the Ka and Kb equilibriums are actually going on at the same time, but we typically talk about weak acids in terms of the Ka. So in order to understand how a buffer deals with hydroxide, we gotta look at the Kb equilibrium of the fluoride anion. So if I have a buffer solution and I start adding hydroxide to it in the form of uh, some strong base like sodium hydroxide, once again, Le Chatelier's principle says that this equilibrium is going to shift to the left. As I add in hydroxide, uh, the equilibrium is going to shift to the left and that hydroxide is going to be used up. Um, and overall what happens is the hydroxide converts our weak acid, in this case hydrofluoric acid, um, to the conjugate base, um, the fluoride anion. So that's the main thing you want to remember. When you have a buffer solution of a weak acid and its conjugate base, when you add in hydroxide, what happens is the weak acid is converted to the conjugate base. So remember that. So I have to admit uh, this concept of using the KBE to discuss how a buffer interacts with hydroxide is a little difficult to understand and it's one of the more difficult topics that my uh, students try to grasp. So I have another way of explaining it that's a little simpler. So we can actually talk about um, how a buffer deals with hydroxide by looking at the Ka equilibrium. All you have to do is remember that hydroxide and hydronium neutralize each other. And we've learned that already when we looked at the uh, KW interaction. So we understand hydroxide and hydronium 
uh, neutralize each other to uh, form water. So if we look at the Ka equilibrium, as we add in hydroxide, the hydroxide actually is going to remove hydronium from this equilibrium. So as the concentration of hydronium decreases, this equilibrium is going to shift to the right. And once again, what ends up happening is the addition of hydroxide converts the weak acid, hydrofluoric acid, to its conjugate base, the fluoride anion.